Republican designee Bruce Blakeman. Hi, how are you? Hi, Liz. How are you? I am well, thanks. Good. So let's get right to it by talking about some new poll numbers. Sienna released them today. Um, Joe Diaguardi in the lead by 19 percent. You follow with eight and you have David Malpass with five. The real issue is 68 percent of Republicans have no idea who they're going to support. Yeah, that's just the point. Basically, I'm very confident that I am going to win the primary. I'm very comfortable where I am now in the campaign. I think that basically I'm poised for victory, and I think I'm the best candidate to defeat Kirsten Gillibrand, and I think that's what the 68 percent undecided are going to uh, figure out. And uh, basically, I'm running against two guys who aren't real conservatives. They're not real Republicans. So uh, I feel very confident that when people have the, the ability to compare the three of us, that uh, I will be the overwhelming victor and go on to defeat Senator Gillibrand. Let's say that you do win, actually, but you win with, like, I don't know, some kind of turnout that's 12 percent or the, the turnout's expected to be low. What does it mean to win a victory with so few people actually weighing in and then going on to face someone in a state who has more money, of course, and who ha in a state where there are far more Democrats than Republicans? It, it will mean that I'm the winner. <laughs> that's what it will mean. Mm. So. Oh, yes, but you won't have much of a mandate going forward? Uh, I really don't think that that's the case. I think basically whoever wins, and I believe it'll be me, is going to take their case to the public. And I think Senator Gillibrand's record is so poor that I think that basically she's very vulnerable. Her approval rating, I think, is still around 34 percent. And uh, she seems to be in trouble. Well, the thing is, though, her approval rating is improving. And actually, for the first time, again, in this same poll, 38 percent of people say that they would prefer to see her elected as opposed to the generic someone else, not even you or Diaguardi or Malpass, just someone else. Now that's 3836. So that's a milestone for her actually that she hasn't seen before. That's that's very poor if you're an incumbent. Well, that, but that 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 puts you in the category of not just vulnerable, that puts you in the category of very very vulnerable. Yeah, theoretically, but she's leading you 55-28. I mean, she's leading all of you guys by very wide margins that she is slowly increasing. Well, she doesn't, have an, she doesn't have an opponent yet. So once the primary is over and once I have the momentum from the primary and people get to know me and they compare me to Senator Gillibrand, I believe that I have the message. Look, people feel that this country is failing. They are not comfortable and they are not confident with the direction that this country is taking. But Bruce, who's going to come out to vote? I mean, arguably the real top of the ticket brawl, if you will, is going to be between Carl Palladino and Rick Lazio. That's actually a fight that Republicans are going to want to weigh in on. I mean, now, actually, there's a large number of people who are undecided there, too. But Andrew Cuomo is the top of the ticket for the Democrats. He is far and away leading either of those two guys. So who's going to come out? What Republican is going to say, I really should come out and vote for a long shot whomever, when actually I don't know that my vote's going to count at the top of the ticket? Yeah, well, I don't know about polls, and I don't know about all the experts and all the geniuses that are making their predictions, but I will tell you this much. I put 20,000 miles on my car since January. I've driven to Albany, Buffalo, Rochester, Binghamton, so many times I'm qualified to vote probably in all those cities. And I'll tell you what people are telling me. They're fed up. They've had enough. They want somebody to be their voice in Washington. They want someone to fight for them. They know that I'm a fighter. And when they compare me to Senator Gillibrand or compare me to my two Republican opponents, I will win. And I think that basically people are going to come out. There are people who can't wait to vote in the general election, not just Republicans, independents and Democrats, especially the Reagan Democrats, who are Democrats and they usually vote Democrat. But this year they're fed up. They're going to come back because they want leadership. They want someone to fight for them. They want us to cut spending. They want us to cut taxes. They want us to do what we should have done in the beginning that they're not doing in Washington, and that's create jobs. And they want our borders protected. They want our homeland protected. And they want us to repeal the bad deal, repeal Obamacare. That's what they want. Let me ask you this. You only have one line here, right? You were the Republican designee. No, I, I probably have more than one line. Really? How is that going to happen? Uh, I expect that I will get one of the uh, taxpayer uh, advocacy lines. Well, have you been circulating petitions for those? There have been t petitions circulated for me, and there have been petitions that have been circulating for someone else who said that if I win the primary and when I win the primary, that they would get off the line. Who is that person? That David Malpass. David Malpass has been, wait a minute, you and David Malpass have a deal? No, I, I have no deal with him. He has said that he is not, if he doesn't win the Republican 
uh, primary, he, he will get off the, uh, the taxpayer line. Well, actually, is that possible? It is possible for an independent line, isn't it? You have until a, a, a later date to get yourself off to decline the nomination. Is that true? Or do you have to be a Repub uh, sorry, an attorney or move out of state or die the way you have to, generally speaking? Is that you know, I, you know, I haven't put a lot of effort into this because basically I'm running for the Republican primary. But you asked me a question. I believe that there is a better than 50 percent chance that I will have a taxpayer line. OK, that's Carl Palladino's party line. That's the one that he actually created and helped to fund and helped to create. Are you endorsing him for governor? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with running whoever the Republican nominee is. Uh, and, you know, I have enough on my plate running for United States Senate. I don't have to get involved in gubernatorial politics or any primaries other than my own. So I'm just completely focused on doing a good job fighting for the people, winning the nomination, winning the general election, and then going down to Washington and bringing a practical, common sense approach to government and having a government that's responsive to the people, that listens to the people, and someone that will fight for them. Okay, let's assume, devil's advocate, will you play for a minute? Just a little hypothetical. Just a little. Sure. Okay. So let's assume that you do not win the GOP primary. And then will you turn around and endorse whomever the winner is? Jody Aguardi, David Malpass. I am going to win. I know. The I know. Republican That's primary. why I asked you to play the hypothetical wanna, game. I, I, don't, I don't want to engage in hypothetical games because the reality is that um, I have the momentum, I have the message. Uh, I have the ability to bring my message to the people. I have all the large counties supporting me, whether it's Albany or Saratoga or Nassau or Suffolk or Kings or, or um, Staten Island or Manhattan, Rockland, Putnam. I okay. could go down the list. I'm, These Bruce. counties are supporting me. I will have the momentum and I will win. And I don't want to speculate on a lot of different things that okay, may or may not happen. Okay, but what if Joe DiGuardi wins the conservative line? I mean, he, he loses the GOP primary, but he has the conservative line because he's the conservative designee. That means you and he are going to be splitting the same vote, which is already smaller than the Democratic vote. Doesn't that just allow Kirsten Gillibrand to sail right through? Um, most of the conservatives that I've talked to, especially recently, um, will probably rally around me because when they have the alternative of Bruce Blakeman becoming the United States Senator or Kirsten Gillibrand, they're going to work for Bruce Blakeman. So I am very confident that when I win the Republican primary that many conservative leaders will rally around me and support me. Okay, what's so conservative about you exactly? Because actually you don't have the conservative line and now all of the three of you, Diaguardi and Malpass and yourself, are trying to out-conservative the other. Each one of you guys has sat here and told me that they are the true conservative in the well, race. Well, let's compare the records. When I was in county government, every year that I served in the county legislature, I cut the county executive's budget. But didn't you vote I for cut, a tax increase? I, let me finish. I cut, I cut a Republican county executive's budget over four years by over $150 million. I cut discretionary spending. Now, because of unfunded federal mandates, there are things that county legislators can't cut. So after we cut completely from the bone, and after I cut political patronage, which was unheard of, then we could not cut any further. We faced a situation where I had to make decisions about laying off police officers, probation officers, correction officers, whether sewage treatment plants would be updated and make it environmentally safe on Long Island. So I instituted, after I completely cut, a very modest tax increase that was below the rate of inflation averaged over four years. And can I tell you something? There is no taxpayer that will complain about their elected official in county government who raises taxes after cutting spending and doesn't raise them more than the cost of inflation. You know when people complain? When the federal government spends 80% more than they take in. When state government spends 50% more than they take in. When we run up deficits down in Washington of $1.7 trillion, where we have a national debt of $14 trillion, much of it owed to foreign governments. That's when people complain. And when I go to Washington, I'm going to stop the unfunded mandates on local government because it's only increasing, increasing the cost of local government and increasing people's property taxes. And that is a very, very um, tough situation for people to be in because 
it's not dependent on what their income is. It's not dependent on how much they have in the bank. It's not dependent upon what assets they have. It's dependent upon their home, but and it's the wrong you, way to go. Won't you only just be one vote, one voice in a whole bunch of voices? And if you're in the minority and the Senate control of the Senate doesn't flip, what are you going to be able to do exactly to achieve that goal? Um, a lot of commentators feel that this is the most important race in America, that, in fact, I will be the 51st Republican. So in other words, to get to 51, we have to beat Senator Gillibrand. So I believe I will be the 51st Republican. And when I become the 51st Republican, we're going to stop spending more than we take in. We're going to repeal Obamacare. And we're going to start protecting our borders and That's get serious about Homeland Security. In 06, she, some people say, was the Democrat vote that flipped the House. She was the, she was the linchpin, and then they went on to get more seats. Let me just ask you also, before we run out of time, I want to talk to you about the mosque, because it's obviously everything is hinging on that. We're all talking about it. I would assume you thought it was inappropriate for the president to weigh in? I think it was inappropriate for the president to weigh in. I think also that the president was wrong I don't think they should build the mosque in the shadows of Ground Zero, where my nephew, while rescuing people, lost his life, where thousands of other innocent victims lost their life. It will be a monument to radical Islam. And I have talked to moderate Muslims, and they feel the same way. And I have asked them to raise their voices and weigh in on this issue. Because it's not that we're against freedom of religion. It's not that we're against Islam. What we're against is radical Islam, extremists, foreign governments funding a monument to Islamic radicalism and extra Islamic terrorism. Where are those the moderate Muslims who feel that way? Because actually there are some in your party who are worried that this issue actually could tip the balance into the wrong direction. Ed Rollins, for example, in the Washington Post today, a national GOP figure and advisor, says, you know, the risk is that you'll look anti-Muslim, and that's not a message that the GOP wants to send at all. The mosque issue is not about being pro-Muslim, anti-Muslim, for organized religion, against organized religion, freedom of religion. What it's about, it's about whether or not we are going to stand on the sidelines and allow a monument to Islamic terrorism. They are building it in an area that's not residential, it's commercial. So they're not serving the Muslim community. There are virtually no Muslims living within that area. And there are foreign governments that are backing this, and I am very, very, very concerned about those governments, especially Saudi Arabia, getting involved when Saudi Arabia has a foundation of supporting Wahhabism, which is, teaches the most extreme Islamic values. You know, just a few days ago, a, a young couple, a 23-year-old and a 19-year-old, eloped. And the Taliban yep. now has sentenced them to death to be stoned to death, stoned to death for falling in love, and some of their own family members are going to take part. That is the most radical extremists who are Muslim. And I've talked to moderate Muslims, and they don't want that in our country. They came here because they wanted to be able to practice Islam the way they wanted to, without the radicals and without the extremists telling them what they must well, do. Well, I think actually you're making exactly the freedom of religion argument that the other side is is making, the people who support the mosque. But no, I know we're going to... Uh no, no. Actually, what's going on here is radical Islam is trying to create a divide between the American people and the moderate Muslim community. And hopefully, the moderate Muslim community and the American people are smart enough to see through their plan, because I think that's what this mosque is all about. And that's why I've called upon moderate Muslims, people that I know, that I've done business with, that I'm friends with, to speak out about this, stand up and be counted, because they don't want, and they have told me this, they do not want this monument to radical Islam. They think that the mosque could be better served somewhere else where there's at least a Muslim community to serve. Well, we will be looking for that because we haven't seen it yet. And I'm, I'm sure that we've heard a lot about this. We're going to hear a lot more about this in the debates. I want to thank you very much for joining Thanks, us Liz. tonight.